Hello everybody and welcome to the first of two videos dealing with the ending of King and Rook versus King and two disconnected past pawns. The position on the board is actually from one of my junior tournament games played back in 1979. Well, that seems a long time ago, but I haven't forgotten this ending for reasons that I'll explain later. It's White's move, and if you'd like to think about what's going on in the position and whether or not White can win, pause the video here. Okay, well, well done if you had a go at this problem. So the most important general feature of positions like this is the outside passer. Stopping the rook's pawn is the attacker's top priority. Hence, the strongest move, and in fact the only winning move, is rook h6. And that's what appeared on the board. So congratulations if you chose rook h6 as well. Now, a mistake that's often made here is to capture the other passer that is further back and much less dangerous. So let's see what happens after rook takes e6. Well, black can simply advance h4, and the white king is outside of the winning zone. And we can see this uh, quite easily. White comes over to b4 with his king. Black pushes h3. The white king comes to c3. Well, there's nothing to stop black from pushing again. He goes to h2. Now the rook has to swing over to stop that pawn. Black protects the pawn with king g3, but after king d2, king g2, it's inevitable that the h-pawn will queen. White will have to give up his rook for that pawn and will be left with bare kings, and the game will be drawn. Okay, well, what happens, though, if white immediately tries to bring his, his king over to stop the pawn? So he plays uh, king b4. Again, black can run his h-pawn, h4. King goes to c3. The pawn advances to h3. King comes to d3. The pawn goes one step further to h2. So the rook has to come to h6 to stop it from queening. And the black king comes to g3. Now here, uh, if we're white to play the move king e3, black can counter with king g2, threatening to queen the pawn. And the only move to stop that is a check, rook g6. But black has the square f1 available for his king. And so white would have to go back and the position would repeat itself, and it would be a draw. So instead, um, white does better by trying the move king e2. And here black has to take care. He's unable to play the move king g2 in this position, because this runs into rook g6 check. And now black faces an unenviable choice. If he puts his king on the h1 square, well, unfortunately, because of the existence of the e-pawn, there's no stalemate after king f2. And in fact, black would have to move his e-pawn. And white can then just swing his rook over, let's say rook a6, and next move he's going to play rook a1 and that would be checkmate at the end of the game. Um, however, if black alternatively gets out of check by moving king h3, well, white will still bring his king over to f2, and if the pawn queens, black, black will not keep his queen for very long because white can win it with rook h6 check, and if he under promotes to a knight with check, white plays king f3, and he's picking up that knight. 
and will win the game uh, very, very easily. However, after the move king e2, black doesn't have to play king g2 uh, because uh, he has uh, a trump card or a trump pawn. Instead, black can play the move e5. And this is a very, very nice uh, drawing move. So, well, white to check, rook g6. Black can just play king f4. And the king's too far away to guard the queening square, so the rook would have to go back. And then black can simply repeat the position. So, the only other option is for white to try the move king f1. Then black has e4. The rook checks on g6. Now black can go to f3. And from f3, he's stopping the white king from coming to g2. And so white would have to go back. And we're simply repeating the position. And then the only other thing that white can can try here is a waiting move. Supposing he plays the move rook h8, but then the pawn comes forward, and if white waits again, black plays e2 check. It's nothing better than to capture that pawn, and after king g2, the game is drawn because uh, white cannot prevent that pawn from queening and we'll be left with the, the bear kings. All right, so we've looked at what happens after rook takes e6 and king b4. So by process of elimination, the only move left to try is indeed rook h6. Now the, the previous lines that I've just shown you are quite hard to calculate over the board, but applying the general principle of prioritizing the outside passer clearly identifies rook h6 as the strongest candidate move. And we can see that putting the rook on h6 stops black from simply running the h-pawn down the board, which is the strategy that, that was very effective uh, in, in those other lines. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you how the game proceeded from here because no more moves were played. The tournament director came over, stopped um, the players' clocks and said, well, that's it, guys. We need to start the next round now. I'm sending the position for adjudication. Adjudication, huh. that's, um, that's a pretty dirty word in, in, in chess. Um, it's much, much better for, for games to be settled over the board, even, even in a blitz finish, because at least then uh, you, get, uh, you get a fair result that, that reflects um, the competencies of the players. Um, okay, so the next round began, and halfway through the game, the director came back to the board and informed me that the adjudication was a draw. Well, I wasn't best pleased, let me tell you. But the decision was final, and with my clock running, I just had to, I just had to suck it up. Um, plus, I mean, I only had a, a strong feeling that it was a win for White. Um, analyzing on another board when you're in play is, is against tournament rules. So there was, there was no possible way to, um, to challenge the decision. Uh, okay, well that was that was forty years ago, so let's let's establish um, though uh, that white is in fact winning this position. Well, black um, clearly can't let the h pawn go, so there are two options here. One is to play king g four, and the other is to play king g five. So let's see what happens after king g four. Well, white will. Get moving with his king, goes to b4. Black plays h4. 
white king comes to c3. The black pawn advances again to h3. King comes over to d3, and now black has to come forward with his king to g3. Okay, let's pause here. Now, um, I don't know uh, where exactly the adjudicator made his mistake, but I, I suspect that it, it may have been um, here. Because white has to exercise some care at this point. It's very tempting to play the move king e2, because it, getting to this h1 square is, is, is attractive. But we've already seen that, in fact, black can draw this after the sequence h2, king f1, and e5. We know that's, um, we know that's a draw. But instead of um, playing king e2, white can, in fact, uh, transpose into another line that we've previously seen. And he does this by playing the move king e3 which is much stronger. And now if black plays king g2, white opposes with king e2. And now after h2, rook g6 check, we've transposed into a line that we saw earlier where we uh, discovered that black now faces a dilemma. Um, he gets mated very quickly after king h1 king f2 and if he goes to h3 white still moves his king to f2 and when the pawn promotes either to a queen or under promotes to a knight um, then white picks up that piece and wins the game so it's clearly a win after king g4 so the only thing left to try is is king g5 and that's, um, that's quite a sneaky uh, attempt. It may be worth playing over the board if you find yourself in, the, in this difficult position. And it's sneaky because black offers the e-pawn as bait. But we know that, that white must not capture um, the poison pawn because if he does, his king is outside of the winning zone. Um, and so he will only uh, draw the game. So instead of capturing the pawn, white, um, white is, is clever and plays a waiting move. Rook h8. Rook h7 also works. Um, either of those moves is, is fine. And now white is clearly winning because if black plays king g4 or h4, then that'll lead to exactly the same scenario that we just looked at while pushing the e-pawn loses because the white king is inside the queening square of, 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 of this pawn. And there are one, two, three, four, five files separating the king from the pawn and the pawn is uh, one, two, three, four, five ranks away from queening. So that forms a five by five square and the white king's inside of that square and so can easily stop the pawn. Okay, well that's the end of, of part one um, of, of this two video series. I hope uh, that you'll uh, join me in watching part two. Thanks very much for watching this part.